Welcome to the Apple Macintosh Portable for the servicing technician. Before you begin this course, I'll review what's included in your training kit, identify additional materials, tools, and equipment you'll need, and briefly describe how the course works. In your Macintosh Portable training kit, you'll find a learning guide, videotape, quick reference guide, and an evaluation diskette. The learning guide is the roadmap for the course. The learning guide is divided into four modules. Each module lists the module objectives and includes the activities you'll need to complete to reach the objectives. The videotape gives you a tour of the Macintosh portable and demonstrates each of the procedures you'll use to troubleshoot, take apart, and operate the Macintosh portable. This tape will also be valuable to you after you complete the course whenever you want to review a procedure. Each part of the tape is numbered in the upper right corner of your screen. These numbers will help you to easily locate each of the five parts of the tape. The quick reference guide includes a variety of charts and diagrams which summarize key information and procedures you'll need to operate, troubleshoot, and repair the Macintosh portable. Like the videotape, the quick reference guide is a valuable tool you'll find helpful after you complete the course. And finally, the evaluation diskette. The diskette includes four checkpoints, one for each module. Once you've completed all the activities for a module, the module checkpoint will give you a chance to perform the module objectives. When you've passed each of the four checkpoints, the evaluation diskette will print out a completion card. Send this card to Apple using the label in your training kit. Apple will then send you a certificate indicating your completion of the Macintosh Portable Service Training Course. To complete this course, you'll need these additional materials, tools, and equipment. You'll need the Macintosh Portable Technical Procedures, the Macintosh Portable AppleCat Mac Test Diagnostic Diskette, and the Macintosh Hard Disk Test Version 1.0 or higher. The Macintosh Portable requires very few tools to service it, but you will need a number two screwdriver, and a jeweler's screwdriver, and an ESD workstation. You'll also need this equipment, a Macintosh portable, a printer, either an image writer or a laser writer, to print the completion card on, and a videotape player and monitor. Now here's how the course works. In a moment, I'll ask you to stop the tape to review the introduction to your learning guide entitled, Getting Started, and then to begin module one. Complete Module 1 by reading through the module and completing each activity. As you work through the module, you'll be asked to refer to the technical procedures or view a portion of the videotape. After using the technical procedures or viewing the videotape, return to the learning guide and complete the next activity. To keep track of where you are in a module, be sure to check off each activity as it's completed. When you have completed all the activities in Module 1, Complete the Module 1 checkpoint on the evaluation diskette. Then repeat these steps for Modules 2, 3, and 4. You'll find a list of the necessary materials, tools, and equipment listed in the section of your learning guide entitled, Getting Started. When you have gathered all the necessary materials, tools, and equipment, and your ESD workstation is set up, you're ready to begin Module 1, introducing the Macintosh Portable. Please stop the tape Review Getting Started and begin Module 1. This is the Macintosh Portable. Operating a Macintosh Portable is like operating other computers in the Macintosh family, with a few important differences. In this part of the tape, I'll give you a brief tour of the Macintosh Portable, locate connectors, ports, and switches, and show you several of the optional components available for the Macintosh Portable. The Macintosh Portable is a fully functional portable Macintosh in a one-piece battery-powered unit. The Macintosh Portable provides complete Macintosh compatibility 
with twice the speed of an SE. It comes standard with one megabyte of RAM and an FDHD floppy disk drive. Additional memory and a hard drive or a second floppy drive can be added. Historically, screen quality has been the weakest part of portable computers. The Macintosh Portable uses the high-resolution Active Matrix Liquid Crystal Display. In this type of display, a transistor is built in behind each pixel, giving the screen a fast response time and high contrast. The Macintosh Portable screen has almost 50% more pixels than an SE. The Macintosh Portable comes with a trackball pointing device. Roll the trackball to move the cursor and press the bar to click on an icon or menu. The keyboard and trackball can be interchanged for left-handed users. Macintosh Portable Options Several optional components are available for the Macintosh Portable, which are not currently available for other Macintosh computers. This is the Macintosh Portable RAM card. This card adds additional RAM to the main logic board. Currently, it's available with one megabyte of RAM. Here is the Macintosh Portable modem card. The internal modem card allows you to connect the Macintosh Portable to a normal telephone line. The card sends data at 2400 baud. The Macintosh Portable numerical keypad. The trackball can be replaced with a numerical keypad. This is the Macintosh Portable optional mouse. If the trackball is replaced with the numerical keypad, the optional mouse can be used as a pointing device. This low-power mouse is especially designed for battery-powered systems. It draws less power than the normal Macintosh mouse. If you would like to learn more about the Macintosh Portable's many features and how Macintosh Portable compares to other Macintosh computers, refer to the specifications chart listed in the Macintosh Portable Quick Reference Guide. Macintosh Portable Connectors, Ports, and Switches Located to the left of the keyboard are the reset and interrupt switches. Use these switches to reboot the Macintosh portable and reset the power manager. The back panel looks similar to the back panel of an SC. Starting at the left side, these are the connectors. The video out port. This port provides a video signal for future development and use of external monitors. External disk drive port. An FDHD or 800K floppy disk drive can be connected. SCSI port. All Macintosh compatible SCSI devices can be connected to the Macintosh portable. Phone jack. If the modem card is installed, the standard telephone connector will extend through this opening. If the modem card is not present, a plastic plug will cover the opening. Apple Desktop Bus. The optional mouse or Apple Talk can be connected to this bus. Printer Port. Port 1 is used to connect any Macintosh compatible printer. Modem Port. Port 2 is used to connect the Apple Personal Modem. Audio Port. This connector is used to connect stereo headphones or speakers. Power Adapter Port. This connector is used to connect the power adapter. This concludes part two of this tape, introducing the Macintosh Portable Tour A, features and optional components. Please stop the tape, return to module one, and complete activity three. To use the Macintosh Portable, simply open the cover. Unlike most computers, the Macintosh Portable doesn't have an on and off switch. 
Once the battery is installed, the computer is on all the time. The Macintosh Portable has several power management features which allow you to reduce the power drain on the battery. If you don't see anything on the screen, it's because the Macintosh Portable is in a power saving mode called System Sleep. You wake the Macintosh Portable up by pressing any key except the Caps Lock key and the pointing device button. If you plan to leave the Macintosh Portable for a while, you can put the computer to sleep by opening the special menu and selecting sleep. The Macintosh Portable will go to sleep until you wake it up again by pressing a key. The system will automatically go to sleep if the computer isn't used for a period of time. You can set this period of time by opening the Apple menu, clicking on Control Panel, and then clicking on the Macintosh Portable icon. Set System Sleep by dragging the lever to the left for shorter periods or to the right for longer periods. The numbers indicate time in minutes. You can override System Sleep when the battery charger is connected. Click the box labeled Stay Awake When Plugged In. This option overrides the System Sleep setting as long as the battery charger is plugged in. You may find this option helpful when you are servicing the Macintosh Portable. With the control panel window open and the Macintosh Portable icon selected, you can also set hard disk sleep. Like system sleep, you can set the period of time the hard drive continues operating after inactivity. Drag the lever left for a shorter period or right for a longer period. When asleep, the hard disk starts up as soon as you perform an action that needs access to it. The drive takes only a few seconds to return to normal speed. As with system sleep, if the box labeled stay awake when plugged in is selected, the hard disk sleep setting will be overridden as long as the battery charger is plugged in. Again, you may find this option helpful when you are servicing the Macintosh Portable. With the control panel window open and the Macintosh Portable icon selected, you can set screen contrast. Click on the lever and drag it up for more contrast and down for less contrast. The Macintosh Portable has another power saving feature called rest. After 15 seconds of inactivity, the microprocessor slows down from 16 megahertz to 1 megahertz. The microprocessor returns to full speed as soon as you resume work. Each time you wake the Macintosh portable up, you should check the battery level before you begin to work. To check the battery level, first open the Apple menu and then select the battery desk accessory. A thermometer-like gauge indicates the percent the battery is charged. If the battery charge is low, a series of on-screen alerts will also appear warning you that the battery is low. Be sure to plug in the battery charger and recharge the battery when you receive the first warning. A lightning icon will appear above the charge gauge when the battery charger is connected to the computer and to an electrical outlet. The battery charger can be plugged in at all times. There is no danger of overcharging the battery. You can use the Macintosh portable while it is charging, although it will recharge much faster if you don't. You can put the Macintosh portable to sleep when the battery desk accessory is open. Other than the power management features, use the Macintosh Portable as you would use the Macintosh SE. This concludes part three of the tape. Introducing the Macintosh Portable, Tour B, Power Management Options. You're ready to begin operating your Macintosh Portable. Please stop the tape, return to module one, and complete activity 10.
The Macintosh Portable has 14 major replaceable modules and parts. Many of these parts are different from those found in the Macintosh SE. The location and the procedures used to remove each of the 14 parts is also quite different. To service the Macintosh Portable, you must be able to accurately and quickly identify and remove a faulty module or part. Part 4 of this tape will identify each of the 14 major removable modules and parts. Let's begin with the Macintosh Portable's display assembly. The display assembly is made up of the active matrix display unit and the display assembly frame. The display assembly also protects the Macintosh Portable keyboard when closed. This is the keyboard cover. Located under the keyboard cover is the keyboard, trackball, or optional numeric keypad, and the speaker. Here is the rear cover. Located under the rear cover is the SCSI hard drive. Below the SCSI hard drive is the floppy disk drive. The Macintosh Portable can be configured with one floppy drive, a SCSI hard disk drive and one floppy drive, or two floppy drives. Next to the drives are the optional cards. Next to the optional cards is the main battery. When this cover is removed, the battery is turned off. To the rear of the main battery is the 9 volt backup battery. When the main battery cover is removed, this 9 volt battery is used for backup power. The backup battery saves data stored in RAM and parameter RAM. This battery is not powerful enough to operate the Macintosh Portable and should only be used for a very brief period of time. This is the subframe assembly. Located at the bottom of the subframe assembly is the main logic board. These are the 14 major replaceable modules and parts of the Macintosh Portable. This concludes part four of this tape, Macintosh Portable Replaceable Parts Identification. Please stop the tape and return to module two and complete activity two. Servicing Macintosh Portable requires removing and replacing faulty modules and parts. Part 5 of this tape demonstrates how to remove and replace each of the 14 major modules and parts. Before beginning take apart of the Macintosh Portable, be sure that your ESD workstation is set up. Also, have the Macintosh Portable technical procedures and any tools listed in Module 2. Begin take apart by watching the first demonstration presented in this part of the videotape. When asked, stop the tape and remove the part as demonstrated in the tape using the technical procedures. When you have removed the part, start the tape and view the next demonstration. Repeat this procedure until you have completely taken apart and reassembled your Macintosh portable. If your ESD workstation is set up and you have the necessary materials and tools, you're ready to begin take apart. Remove the rear cover. Begin by placing the computer on the static mat with the rear panel facing you. Next, press in the two plastic cover latches at the upper left and right rear of the computer. Now pivot the rear of the cover up and towards the front of the computer and lift it off. 
Please stop the tape and remove the rear cover. Remove the main battery. First, press down on the plastic tabs at the front of the battery cover and slide the battery cover toward the rear of the computer and off. Now lift out the battery. Be sure to replace the battery cover so that the system doesn't try to boot off of the 9 volt battery. Stop the tape and remove the main battery. Remove the option cards. Hold the option card between your thumb and finger. Then lift the option card straight up and out of the computer. Don't rock the cards. Rocking the cards may destroy a trace on the main logic board. Repeat this procedure for each option card. Stop the tape and remove all the option cards. Remove the keyboard cover. Begin by turning the computer so that the cover and keyboard is facing you. We'll stand the computer up so that you can more clearly see the procedure. Locate the plastic feet at the front left and right of the case bottom. Remove each foot by inserting the tip of the screwdriver under the center of the foot and gently prying it away from the case. Now push the tip of the jeweler's screwdriver into the center hole. Push up until the corner unsnaps. Finally, starting at the edges, slide your thumbs between the bottom case and the keyboard cover and lift the cover off. Stop the tape and remove the keyboard cover. Remove the keyboard, trackball, or numeric keypad. Begin by disconnecting the flat cable connecting each device to be removed from the main logic board. Starting at one side of the keyboard, Simultaneously press back on each plastic tab securing the keyboard to the case. Then lift the keyboard from the computer. Now simultaneously press back on each plastic tab securing the trackball or numeric keypad to the case. Then lift the trackball from the computer. Finally, Remove the divider. Stop the tape and remove the keyboard and trackball or numeric keypad. Remove the speaker. First, disconnect the speaker wires from the main logic board. Next, Simultaneously press the plastic tabs away from the speaker and lift the speaker from the subframe. Now stop the tape and remove the speaker. Remove the display assembly. Begin by disconnecting the display cable from the main logic board. Next, remove the left center pivot cover by twisting it slightly and then pulling the cover to the left. Lift up and remove the left display latch. While holding the display assembly with your right hand, Slide the left display clutch mechanism to the left and out of the subframe. Finally, slide the display assembly up 
and to the left. Disengage it from the right clutch mechanism and lift it from the computer. Now stop the tape and remove the display assembly. Remove the active matrix display unit. Start by placing the display assembly on a padded work surface, display side up. Warning, be very careful not to scratch or damage the display. Remove the plastic collar from the display pivot by pushing up on it with your finger. Now slide the carrying handle to its fully extended position. Insert the jeweler's screwdriver into the slot on the left side of the display. Gently angle the screwdriver to the left. This will release the plastic latch inside the assembly. Then release the right side latch. Then separate the two halves of the display assembly. Next, with your thumbs, pull on the two plastic clips at the upper left and right sides of the display. Lift up the display with your index fingers. Finally, slide the display up and out of the case. Stop the tape and remove the active matrix display unit. Remove the SCSI hard disk drive. Disconnect the hard disk drive cable from the main logic board. Unsnap the plastic latches at the front and rear of the hard disk drive and lift up and remove the hard disk from the subframe. Caution! Do not loosen or remove any of the four screws that attach the hard disk mechanism to the metal bracket. Doing so can cause irreparable hard drive damage. Now stop the tape and remove the SCSI hard disk drive. Remove the lower floppy disk drive. First, disconnect the disk drive cable from the logic board. Then lift the disk drive up and out of the subframe. Please stop the tape and remove the lower floppy disk drive. Remove the main logic board. Begin by disconnecting the battery cable from the logic board. Next, using the flat blade screwdriver or your finger, pull the plastic clip at the left front of the subframe while simultaneously lifting the left side of the subframe. While holding the left side of the subframe up, press in on the clip at the front and right side of the subframe. Now lift the subframe from the bottom case and place it upside down on a padded work surface. Release each of the plastic clips securing the main logic board to the subframe. As you release each clip, gently lift the logic board and proceed to the next clip. Finally, lift the logic board from the subframe be careful not to twist the main logic board when handling it. The chips are surface mounted and, if twisted, may come loose from the board. This concludes take apart of the Macintosh portable. Now stop the tape and remove the main logic board. When you are ready, restart the tape for the first assembly demonstration. Replace the main logic board. Begin reassembly by feeding the I.O. cables through the subassembly. Then place the rear edge of the main logic board into the plastic clips 
at the back of the subframe. Lower the front of the main logic board into the subframe and gently but firmly press the board into each plastic clip. Place the subframe in position in the bottom case. Press down on the subframe until the three plastic clips snap into place. Finally, connect the battery cable to the main logic board. Be sure the dip switches are accurately set. Incorrect settings could severely damage the system. Now stop the tape and replace the main logic board. Replace the active matrix display unit. First, position the bottom edge of the display into the two plastic clips at the bottom of the case. Make sure the cable is not pinched. Then press down on the top of the display until it snaps into place. Next, place the handle assembly in position in the back cover. The plastic clips should be in the channel at the sides. Place the front cover on the back cover. Now slide the front cover toward the top of the back cover. Finally, snap the plastic ring back onto the display pivot. Please stop the tape and replace the active matrix display unit. Replace the speaker. Begin by placing the speaker in position over its four positioning posts. Then snap the speaker in place. Be careful not to press on the speaker cone. Finally, connect the speaker wires to the main logic board. Stop the tape and replace the speaker. Replace the keyboard and trackball or numeric keypad. First, place the divider in the appropriate position. Then place the front of the keyboard in the positioning tabs at the front of the computer. Press down the rear of the keyboard until it snaps into place. Now, position the trackball or numeric keypad and press down on the rear of the device until it snaps into place. Finally, connect the flat cable from the main logic board to each device. Stop the tape and replace the keyboard and trackball or numeric keypad. Replace the lower floppy disk drive. First, place the disk drive in the subframe. Then connect the disk drive cable to disk drive connector number two. Stop the tape and replace the floppy disk drive. Replace the SCSI hard disk drive. Place the hard drive in position over the subframe. Align the four metal tabs and press down until the plastic latches at the front and rear snap into place. Make sure the disk drive flat cable does not get caught under the metal disk drive bracket. The cable could be damaged. Finally, Connect the drive cable to the main logic board. Please stop the tape and replace the SCSI hard disk drive.
replace the display assembly. First, hold the display assembly upright and align the center collar with the center post. Then slide the assembly onto the right clutch mechanism. While still holding the display assembly upright, slide the left clutch mechanism into place. Now slide the left display latch into position. Then replace the left center pivot cover. Finally, connect the display cable to the main logic board. Stop the tape and replace the display assembly. Replace the keyboard cover. Begin by placing the rear edge of the keyboard cover in place and pivoting the front down. Then press down on the left and right front corners and the center of the cover until it snaps into place. Stop the tape and replace the keyboard cover. Replace the option cards. First, with the rear of the Macintosh facing you, determine which slot to install the option card in. This is the PDS slot, the RAM card slot, the ROM card slot, and the modem card slot. Now position the option card over the correct slot and plug the card into the slot by pushing straight down on the card. Repeat this for each option card. Stop the tape and replace the option cards. Replace the main battery. Begin by removing the battery cover. Place the main battery into the battery compartment. Now position the battery cover on the battery compartment and slide it toward the front of the computer until it snaps into place. Stop the tape and replace the main battery. Replace the rear cover. Begin by centering the rear cover over the computer and placing the front edge in place under the display assembly hinge. Then pivot the rear of the cover down into position. Please stop the tape and replace the rear cover. Whenever you take apart the Macintosh portable, be sure to run Mac tests to verify proper assembly of the computer. Stop the tape now and run Mac test on your Macintosh portable. This concludes reassembly of the Macintosh portable and part five, Macintosh portable take apart. Please stop the tape and begin module three.